Hey everybody, I'm Psychroclasm, and this is the Parasmeshnik. Um, it's a choose-your-own-adventure style game, but it's at the very least, it's got sounds incorporated into it. I don't know if I'll have to read everything, but we will see. For the best experience, use headphones, click the top left arrow to control volume. Got it. November 9th, 1962. Do I click ahead, or are you waiting? Oh, yeah. Your name is Vector Pavlov. You're an oceanographer aboard the Soviet frigate, the Perismesnik. You've been tasked with mapping the ocean floor of a region in the Arctic Sea. You're currently sitting on the cot in your personal quarters. It's a small room with just enough space for a bed and a small desk. A torn envelope lies on your desk. You're fiddling with a small silver locket containing a picture of your wife and daughter. The envelope has been torn open without much care. There's a letter inside. Dear Vector, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I haven't seen or heard from you in months. I know that the work you do is important, but you should be here. If not for me, then for Maya. She needs a father. I wanted it to be you, but you left. I know the union needed you, but I wish you had stayed when I asked. Since you left, Leonid has been coming by more often. He's helping me raise Maya. Just the other day, she called him father. I wanted to correct her, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Because in some ways, he is her father. He's always been there, and you haven't. She's replacing you with him. I still love you, but you're losing Maya. Please come back. With love, Uliana. Wow! Asshole! I love the paranoia counter in the top. <laughs> you grab the notebook and leave your room. You head towards your mess hall where the rest of the crew is eating dinner. When you arrive at the door, you hear loud muffled voices on the other side. You may enter whenever you're ready. Okay. You open the door and grab some food. Tonight is mashed potatoes and peas. You sit down at a table and open your notebook. There's a chart of the nearby sea inside. As you look over your notes, there's a loud burst of laughter from the crew. The charts are maps of the ocean floor that were made using sonography. Something about the charts of this region don't make sense to you. In the charts, there's a large body of mass. Whoa! There's a large body of mass at the bottom of the ocean that doesn't look like any natural formation you've ever seen. This alone perplexed, perplexed you. But the second chart you made showed that the mass moved. To be safe, you made a third chart. In the final chart, you saw what appeared to be a chunk of mass break off from the main body. The shape of the mass doesn't look like any known animals, and there's no information on any plant-based life that can move that fast. You're not sure if you accidentally discovered a new species of aquatic life or if your sensors are on the fritz again. At the other table, the crew is laughing at Yurinev, who's who has two different plates for his peas and potatoes. A bellowing laugh fills the room. You look over and see Oberev, who is grinning ear to ear. Yurinev begins gesturing towards his plates. Yurinev Ruslanovich, Ruslanovich is a deckhand in the Paris Mezhnik. I am not equipped to speak these Russian words. He joined the Soviet Navy at a young age mainly for the free grub and the pay. He has a mild case of brumotactilophobia. What that is is down here. Also known as the fear, oh, never, the fear of different foods touching. This fear is often makes him the target of ridicule from other crew members. And Obrev Denisovich is the resident mechanic for a Paris Mezhnik. He's been working on the Paris Mezhnik for six years and has grown to be very fond of his ship. You once heard them cooing at the ship's engine when you walked by the boiler room. He has a very large build, but he's very friendly. You haven't talked to him much, but you can see that Obrev is a very jovial, bleh, jovial person. The others could... No, oh, the others seem to enjoy talking to him. He's one of a kind. No one could replace him. It's very simple. Pea here, potato here. Pea never put... <laughs> <laughs> it is very simple. P here, potato here. P never touch potato. You never attempt to explain anxiously. It's abomination. What's wrong with it? Nothing wrong, Yuri. Hold up. Do, do, I, do you hear that? Mortar fire. <laughs> oh, breath flings a few peas into Yurinev's mashed potatoes. Asshole. Blech. Why you do this? The room bursts into laughter as Yurinev scrambles to pick the peas out of his potatoes. Uh... Man, he doesn't. He he seems kind of like an asshole to be described as jovial. Ah, come on, Shulvak. It's all in good fun. Yuri is a good guy. Obrev replied with a chuckle. After exchanging a few words with some of the crew, you wrap up your meal and leave the mess hall to go back to your room. When you get back to your personal quarters, you sit down at your desk and begin to look over your notes and charts of the region. After a few hours, you notice your eyelids are growing heavier and heavier. You start to think about sleep. You crawl into bed. <laughs> you crawl into bed. And begin to fall asleep. <laughs> no, we'll let it go. Ah! <laughs> You're awakened by a deafening scream. You clamber out of bed and rush towards the source. You arrive to find a stunned Obrev, mouth agape and wide as <laughs> wide, eyes wide open, staring into a supply closet. Looking inside, you see Yuri. 
His mouth is jammed with peas and potatoes at the same time. As you get closer to the closet, you're hit with a pungent smell. You slowly peer inside and your jaw immediately drops. The walls are drenched in blood. Intestines are strewn about the shelves like ornaments and blood pools on the floor. One of them look at the intestines and you realize something terrible. It's human. You feel your stomach churn as you stumble backwards. Gagging, you lean on the wall for support. A torrent of footsteps is heard as the other crew members arrive. After a few minutes, the entire crew is at the supply closet. You collect yourself and begin to observe the others. Some of the crew grab Overev, still frozen in shock and attempt to pull him away from the scene. Others gather in small groups and begin whispering. It's probably just an animal, right? Think, Yuri, another crew member interjects. Does that look like an animal intestine? No! Also... Oh, I'm a paranoia. Three. But also, why would there be animals on our submarine? We're on a submarine, right? Soon, Captain Stepanov arrives and demands an explanation. As you look at the 13 crew members around you, you notice an odd detail that stands up. Oh, no. Paranoia 10! <laughs> no one's missing! Remir Stepanov is the commanding officer of the Paris Mesnik. He rarely ever fraternizes with the rest of the crew and instead prefers to sit in his quarters alone, drinking the night away. Other than that, you don't know much about the captain, other than that he stays out of your way and you stay out of his. So, we're in a... We're in a, um, the thing kind of situation. Uh, yeah, call it out. My paranoia's at 19, and I'm hearing voices. The captain frowns as you explain that the blood came from a human, but no one on board seems to be missing. What are you suggesting? That this is from one of us? He gestures towards the pooling blood in the supply closet. That's... You cut in gruffly as he tries to dismiss you. We are only humans... We are the only humans for miles. <laughs> I'm gonna read it as it is. We are only humans for miles! After that, we are something else! It could have come from no one else. The captain lets out a deep sigh and covers his face with one hand. He waits a few moments before turning to face you again. Yomoyo, what do you suggest then? Run tests on the blood. Am I a person who can do that? Stepanov gives you an incredulous look. Blood tests, is this necessary? We don't have a lot of testing kits. I don't want to waste kits on a hunch. We need to narrow down suspects. I know this is the wrong choice. I know for a fact this is the wrong choice, because it's never this simple to do the right thing. Also, I want to tell you now, this game is free. I'm only doing one of the endings, and there are multiples. And you can play it for yourself. The blood test will narrow down a list of suspects. Blood could have come from anyone here, but it's human, and we're the only humans for miles, so it had to come from one of us. Captain Stepanov squints as he thinks it over. A few, after a few moments, he reluctantly nods to you and turns to address the crew. Vector will perform tests on blood. Until we get results, everyone here will be in the mess hall. As the crew heads toward the mess hall, you grab a sample of the blood and head to the medical room. You grab a blood test kit with the medical files for all your crew members, as you plan to use the blood type to narrow down the suspects, obviously. I just sent them all to their death because the monster's going to eat them all once they get to the mess hall, isn't it? You start the test and begin logging blood types of each crew number. As you're doing this, the, the first step is completed. You start speculating about where the blood could have come from as you wait for the results of the test. Oh, I'm apparently just going to speculate. As soon as the test is completed, you compare it to the testing manual. A blood type is somewhat rare. A negative. A negative. <laughs> you scan your notes of the crew's blood type and find that only two crew members have been have this blood type. Obrev and Uranev. Report to the mess hall. Kill them both! As you walk to the mess hall, you try to make sense of what you're even trying to say. If any person loses the amount of blood that was in that room, they'd be dead, but you saw both Oberev and Uranev at the closet. Couldn't be from one of them, could it? You arrive at the door to the mess hall. So, uh, among us logic here, Oberev was seen at the closet. I need to... Okay, Yurinev has a fear of two foods touching. I need to put two foods touching near him to see how he reacts. Because I'm assuming the monster won't know. You enter the mess hall to find the crew waiting for you. Some are eating breakfast. Others still seem to be in shock. Captain Stepanov looks at you as you walk in. Well, Vector, what'd you find? You look around the room and spot Obrev, who's sitting at a table, arms crossed and staring straight ahead. Next to him is Yurinev, who's eating the leftovers from a plate in front of him. The contains plate contains both peas and potatoes. So, wait a second. You notice that Uranev is eating potatoes and peas on the same plate despite his fear of foods touching. You watch him eat a few spoonfuls and are shocked to see him eat both foods in one bite. Vector, why now? He never eats foods together like that. What's changed? Vector, an angry Captain Stepanov interrupts your thoughts. You look around to see the entire crew staring at you, waiting in anticipation for the results. We're waiting. 
call out Yurinev. Yuri, your peas touch potatoes and you still eat? As you speak, Obrev comes out of his daze and begins to stare at Yurinev. The room is overcome with a deathly silence as the crew processes this information. My paranoia is at 24. Yurinev scoffs and looks around at everyone before answering. Yeah, so? So the real Yuri has a fear of food touching. He hates for peas to touch potato. Obrev slowly stands up. Obrev's massive build looms over the much smaller Yurin as he steps forward. You're not him. You're not really Yuri. You're not my friend. <laughs> Obrev lunges at Yurinev, clasping his hands around Yurinev's neck. The rest of the crew rushes towards Obrev to stop him. As the crew tries to pull Obrev away, Yurinev lets out an unearthly scream and his eyes roll into the back of his head. Yurinev's body begins thrashing as a black liquid begins oozing out of his eyes. His body contorts unnaturally as it begins transforming into something not of this world. I'm at Paranoia 29. I don't think I'm paranoid. I think we've safely established that this is not paranoia. This is real fact-based fear. As the crew backs away in fear as they watch Obrev struggle with the thrashing Yurinev, after a few moments, Yurinev's body goes limp. Suddenly, a tangle of jet-black tentacles sprouts out of Yurinev's back. Some of the crew let out terrified yelps as they scramble for the door. The creature lets out one last shriek before slashing Obrev's leg with its tentacles and scurrying off, escaping through one of the vents. The crew look towards the vent, confounded at the horror they just witnessed. After a few moments, a crew member runs over to Obrev and begins to treat his leg. There's some shouting to your left. You turn to see another crew member lying on the floor, blood spurting from his neck. What the fuck? How? A few people put him on a gurney and cart him out of the mess hall. As you come to your senses, you begin to come up with a plan. We need to evacuate. Wait a minute. Okay, so first of all, we need to look at Obrev's leg to see if it looks like it's infected or has any black goo in it. But why the hell is... How did another crew member get hurt? Maybe I didn't discover all the imposters. We have to abandon the ship, take the lifeboats, and get out of here. Captain Stepanov stares blankly ahead, almost as if in a daze. As you speak, he looks at you blankly. Slowly, he begins to shake his head, his blank expression gradually turning to anger. First off, Vector, you're not the captain. I am. And second of all, we can't abandon ship, not because of some, some animal. All right, you dumbass. That was not just an animal. It was a monster, it was Yuri, and it replaced him. It could do it again. So I wonder if it inhabits the body like a puppet and it gutted him earlier to have room to fit in. How do we know there's not another one among us then, Vector? If we bring it with us, then the situation's the same. Okay, so I have everyone and everyone except Obrev, and that doesn't ma neither of them makes sense to me because one was randomly slashed, meaning that there's an at least one more imposter. I think. So neither of these works for me. We bring everyone. The blood we found was A negative. Obrev's the only crew member with this blood type now. While he's in shock, he isn't acting strange. We bring everyone. No, there are too many important charts and equipment on the ship to just abandon it. If we find the creature, we kill the creature. That's an order. Stepanov walks away. He orders two crew members to accompany him. You look after him with disdain. Okay, so it didn't matter what I chose. You look around at the rest of the room as the captain leaves. The rest of the crew is nervously fidgeting. Some stare at others with suspicion, eyes darting back and forth, assim or assessing who they can't trust. Others are already huddling in small groups, whispering frantically while occasionally glancing nervously at others. You watch with dismay as some of the crew sneaks away. You need to act now. Okay, we're at 29 on Paranoia. That hasn't changed. You know the crew's best chance at survival is to escape before the creature can replace someone else, but Captain Stepanov won't order an evacuation. Obrev is sitting in the corner. His leg has been freshly bandaged and he is alone. What do you do? I don't remember the number of people on the ship. There's three, including the cat. I want to say there's 13 plus the captain. The captain has three with him now, minus Yuri. So it'd be 10 versus three if I organize a mutiny. He clearly doesn't care for our safety, so I'm organizing a mutiny. Everyone, Stepanov cares more about the equipment than our lives. We escape now, and we blow up the ship so that the creature can't follow. I don't know about blowing it up, but whatever. It'll kill us and replace us like Yuri if we don't, so we have to. Several members of the crew begin to get more riled up as you talk. It's time for a mutiny. As you finish your speech, some answer of your call for a mutiny with a thunderous roar. Others shrink away and flee from the scene. You look around the room to see five members of the crew flocking towards you. They stand in front of you with fish, fists clenched, waiting for orders. So it's me and five others, so six versus... Oh, shit. 
we're in the minority. Five members of the crew have joined your mutiny. You order two to raid the armory and rig the ship to blow. The other two will gather the food from the kitchen and grab other supplies. The last one will go with you to secure the lifeboat. You don't trust them enough yet to let them secure the boat without you. Leave the mess hall. As you leave the mess hall, you tell the mutineer that you, with you that you need to pick up some items in your room first. You walk briskly towards the room, the mutineer following close behind. You're not sure what his name is. Ask him his name. That didn't increase my paranoia, so I'm taking that as a good thing. It's Boris. I worked in the kitchen. You smile assuringly at him. Oh, damn, I should have sent him to the kitchen. Nice to meet you. Together, we might make it out alive. So you both continue toward the living quarters. It costs nothing to ask him his name, I don't think. When you arrive at the living quarters, Boris states that he needs to get something from his room as well. You agree to meet at the entrance in five minutes. Don't split up! You then head to your room alone. You arrive at the door. You open the door to your room. There's no one there. There's a large knife lying on top of your desk. You often used it to open letters and carve when you were bored. You grab the knife, figuring a weapon might come in handy. You catch a glint in the corner of your eye and look to find your golden locket. It's open and your daughter's face is smiling at you. You pause a moment before closing the locket and stashing it in your pocket. You grab the locket and you accidentally knock over some papers on your desk. You look over to see that the charts of the sea bottom in this area. And this chart, the chart with the strange readings from yesterday. I don't want to read over the charts. I would like to grab them to maybe back up my problems. I, but I don't want to waste the time. I, to me, it would make sense to grab it and then run to prove like, hey, something was going on. Because it's charts of the sea floor. It wouldn't do me any good. Like, it wouldn't help me navigate if I'm taking a life raft. No time. You wait at the agreed upon waiting point and Boris doesn't show up. Damn it, your mind begins to wander as you wait. It's been five minutes, he's still not back yet. You begin to grow antsy. I only have the option to leave him behind. That's not good. It's been too long. What if the creature got him? You turn to leave him walking when you hear something behind you. Turn around. Come on. This is your one chance. You pull the knife out of your pocket and clasp it behind your back. As Boris runs up to you, he begins to eye you suspiciously. Were you going to leave me behind? Of course not. You lie and tell him that you have to head towards the lifeboat now. You make sure in that he's in front of you so you can watch his every move. Head towards the lifeboat. <sighs> Damn. You start heading towards the lifeboat with Boris. As you walk behind him, you tighten your grip on the knife hidden behind your back. As you begin thinking something feels off. Why was he late? Maybe it's him. I didn't give him a timetable, so there's no reason he wouldn't be late. And this is going to increase my paranoia. What do you mean, comrade? I'm not a monster if that's what worries you. Here, let me prove it. He opens his bag and takes out a picture of a woman. This is my wife. Would a monster keep an item with sentimental value? I think no. Now, let's keep moving. Uh, I would rather you pull up your shirt and show me your belly to prove to me that your insides aren't missing. He turns around and continues walking toward the lifeboat. You're not entirely convinced, but there's still so much that is unknown about the creature. I'm gonna do nothing. You walk towards the lifeboat with him. Suddenly you hear a loud bang echo through the halls of the ship. You think it's a gunshot. You both begin to run, and you begin to notice blood trails going in and out of some of the rooms. The monster's been busy. You turn the corner and see the lifeboat. As the lifeboat comes into view, you feel a wave of relief wash over you. You can finally get out of here. However, your relief quickly fades when you hear shouting and see Captain Stepanov and one other person run around the corner. Vector, stop now! As Stepanov shouts, the crew member accompanying him points the gun at you. Raise your hands. Oh no. I'm dead. Stepanov and his lackey begin to run towards you, but the gun is still pointed directly at your chest. Stepanov growls at you. You fucker starting a mutiny when the monster roams the ship? What's wrong with you? You split our forces. You split our forces. You took two fuckers and left. What's wrong with you? Uh, I had to kill. A, I had to kill a crew member who was rigging the ship to blow. They shot my guard. I didn't stop him in time. The ship will blow in 15 minutes. He gestures towards the soldier next to him. I almost lost Pavel here in the chaos, but I found him again. God damn it! Stepanov, we have to go. N he cuts you off before you can finish. No, I'm not finished. I expected more from you, Boris. We'll escape on the lifeboat, but the both of you shall be executed for your crimes. He signals for Pavel to shoot. Pavel freezes. His head begins to twitch and black worm-like tendrils begin to flick out of his sleeves. You look over at Boris and the same thing's happening to him. <sighs> you look to Stepanov and yell, run. As Stepanov realizes what's happening, Pavel's arm transforms into a long, slender, black blade and impales him on it. The tendrils making up the blade wriggle as they begin to consume the captain from the inside out. 
Without even thinking, you begin to sprint down the corridor, seeing the bodies of the other crew members strewn about the ship. You see that some of the bodies have bullet wounds. You're unsure if they died because of the monster or because of the mutiny. You begin to slow down as you realize what you've done. You divided the crew. You started the mutiny. The you crew killed each other and the monster picked off the stragglers. You fall to the floor and begin to sob. You hear a roar as the monster begins to approach you, but there's nothing to fight it with. Nowhere to run, and no one to help you. Fuck. Death is all you deserve. Everyone is dead because of you. Your selfishness killed the crew. Your inability to trust killed you. I trusted Boris! I should have stabbed his ass! Look down at your hands. You can hear footsteps approaching you, but you didn't look up. There's a hissing noise, and you feel a firm tug on the back of your clothes. You're lifted off the floor. As you look upwards at your captor, you see a black mass of ever-mutating worm-like strands. It's both solid and shapeless at the same time. You look into its black, soulless eyes and close your eyes as it lets out a blood-curdling shriek. There's a deafening roar. In an instant, everything is white and your entire body is enveloped in an excruciating, burning sensation. Then a comforting warmth envelops you. The monster shrieks, but a bit more high-pitched and wailing. It sounds as if it's dying. What?! As you feel your body burn away, you realize what had happened. The explosives had gone off, and this is it. There's no way to survive the explosion. Even though you know you're about to die, you feel some comfort knowing that the creature was caught in the blast. Hell yeah, I do! And as you close your eyes, all sensation begins to fade away until you feel nothing, see nothing, or nothing. The end. And that is the run that I'm showing to you of the Parish Mezhnik. It is free. Go do what I couldn't and save everybody, if that's even a possibility. I cannot believe. Oh, man. Fuck. I am so disappointed in myself, but this is one of those weird situations where this is so good that I don't want to rob you of the experience of doing it yourself. God, I wonder how many endings it has. Uh, I got half the achievements in the first run through. There are at least two more endings. Um, and that's all I'm willing to say. Um, man, just go play it yourself. It's that was genuinely fun. Ah. I wish more games were like this. Anyway, uh, God, that was Paris Mesnick. Until the next video, stay, the link is in the description below. Until the next video, stay safe, take care of yourselves. And I guess don't trust anybody. Fuck.